In the previous video I said that this refit was probably going to take me three months. I drastically overestimated my abilities and it's actually going to take me six. One thing that I noticed when I turned up to survey the boat was that the rudder needed some serious repairs. Chris from Sailhub, aka Geordie Boy, decided to come over and give me a lift repairing it. So, we dropped the rudder, we did a full inspection of it, we found a bunch of failure points, cracks, a load of delamination work, so we got to sanding, we got to epoxying, and then we got to putting the rudder back in place. Chris actually knows what he's talking about, pay attention to something he says, but like I said, I'm not a professional, ignore me. So we're going to get the, um, actually I'm going to have a tea and a biscuit, that's more important than boat work. So after I've had a tea and a biscuit, we're going to um, drop the rudder. Are we? Yeah, I think so, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll go and try and find something for the rudder to drop on so it doesn't actually drop. Um, and then I'm going to metaphorically <laughs> drop the rudder. <laughs> Chris has come up with this ingenious invention. <laughs> Which is going to work. <laughs> oh, the confidence! I'll show you. So, this is a sail hub special. <clears throat> or a sail hub hookup. We're going to find out. It's going to be one of the two. One of the two. Yeah, so we've got the hole here, which is for the emergency tiller. We've now got a piece of rope coming through here. It's going to go around this block and it's attached onto the winch. Um, this rope here. It's attached with a pin that Chris bent with firepower um, <laughs> and put it through uh, put it through the bolt which goes through the top of the rudder post. This is just because Andy hasn't got the required parts, mate. Yeah, this is just because Andy hasn't got the required know, parts. But, yeah. um, now, just in case, I've put a massive piece of polystyrene foam underneath the rudder. Not that I don't have the utmost confidence in Chris's abilities, um, but I just think that is a pretty good safety mechanism. So we've got a ginormous polystyrene board underneath the rudder in case it plummets to the ground um, hoping it won't but yeah let's uh, let's see if this works if not it'll just drop what's Chris doing in this hole <laughs> the Geordie man in this hole <laughs> so Andy's just winched the, um, the, the whole rudder post up and it's held with a, a collar and then a cross pin through it. So I've just tap the cross pin up. Now that I know he's got the weight. Uh, well, hopefully I can just pull this collar off like so. Oh, easy. Which means that if Andy can lower it slowly, we'll get, hopefully lower it four inches and get the thing off. Andy can lower it slowly. Hold that. Let's go downstairs and check it. That's it, mate. There she goes. Right, I'll kick the block out of the way. With my help, Chris managed to drop the rudder. You did a great job of <laughs> assisting me, didn't you, Chris? <laughs> You're a cheeky buddy. Let's get some light on your I face. Couldn't, I couldn't have done it without you. You'd light this man up. There we go. Oh, yeah. Um, I couldn't have done it without Andy and his fantastic skills. Providing commentary, it's yeah. basically all it was. No, it's good. Um, actually, one of these bolts is sheared here, mate. One of the bolts holding it. That one there, sheared on that side. Has it? Yeah. Yeah, there's a head in here. Yeah. There's, there's obviously a little bit of rust here and there in this stuff, but. Might drill that out, eh? I think you'd be able to tap it out. I think. Right, let's get that fucking screwdriver. All right, I was about to explain what we just did, but now we're just going to do something else and then I'll explain two things that we just did. <laughs> Right, we just did another job. So, one of those bolts was shears that was holding. Chris, what do you call this big metal frame here? The yeah. metal frame supporter. <laughs> yeah, top bearing housing, something like that. Oh, top bearing housing, that sounds much better. <laughs> 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 so top bearing housing here, uh, which holds the rudder post in place as it goes up to the um, emergency tiller pole. Um, one of those bolts was screwed off so anyway looking down here i don't know if you can see in this it's a bit cavernous and dark um but yeah, that's where the rudder comes through that's the um steering quadrant there there's the bit that goes on the other side with some bolt so um yeah, it's pretty straightforward eh? all right yeah pretty easy so yeah this is the 
rigging system are used so we just dropped it through the center with a rope this might i might be explaining basic stuff to people here but this blew my mind i wasn't ready to see this i thought i was going to go after, i thought i was going to have to go under and catch it um <laughs> <laughs> It's all you worried. Were, you were all ready. I was like, like, I'll go yeah. and catch it. Let's I was going to have to buy some steel toe cap boots and all that, but no, <laughs> it was fine. So that worked really well. So we're just going to start um, messing around with the rudder. There's a bunch of cracks in, there's a few D land spots. So we're going to get that right before we pop it back up. Best practice. And um, yeah, catch up with you in a bit. Right, so here's the rudder looking all nice outside the boat and um, what we're going to do is take all this anti-foul off completely there's a couple of spots where we're going to need to do some fiberglass work so we're going to need to sand all this out there's a couple of d-lamb spots there there's a little crack at the top we've also got these little fractures here which are pretty normal to be honest because this is where the most point of stress is there's the old bearing there's the housing, that black thing, need to yank that out. Um, so we're going to take all of this off, take it back to gel coat, get all the delaminated spots out, and then we're going to completely recoat it. We're going to put three coats of the um, osmosis barrier on, then we're going to prime it, and then we're going to basically just completely recover this thing. Um, so there's going to be no little dimples or little bangs or little spots. We're going to get no intrusion from up here. So yeah, we're just going to make this thing look like new like the thing's dry now because it's been out of the water for like three years so it may as well be done chris was saying that like the rudder is the place on the boat that suffers the most from like delamination and osmosis so um yeah that's what we're doing so i'm gonna crack on with it now this goes here and you've got that piece that goes over the top of that and that's the rudder post pretty short convenient because I didn't need to dig a massive hole to get the rudder out <laughs> so that was nice Chris is well impressed with my Dremel he's about to uh, what do you think about it oh, I feel like the ultimate dentist <laughs> <laughs> So he wants to see if these cracks are just gel coat. Yeah, that's going through. But I'm kind of thinking because this boat's been out of the water for that long, it might make sense just to strip this back, relaminate that little patch. Make it stronger. We'll just try and make it watertight for as long as we can. Mm. That's great, that is. Yeah. But we'll just fucking wipe that off. Yeah. Yeah. Take the whole top off. I think it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. How are you standing? Yeah, down here, mate. Alrighty, so today's a different day. Andy's gone away. He's decided it's too hard, sanding too much, it's too painstakingly boring, and he's just not used to having to work with his hands and actually think. So, and anyway, we're on to the rudder here. This is the beauty thing here. Andy got it out the other day, sanded it back. And if you look close, this is down to where we've got there's a staple, a sta like a mild steel staples put in. So, quick intermission here, people. For those of you who don't know, I've been running a podcast for the last two and a half years called the Ocean Cruisers Podcast, and I've been speaking with some amazing people, some great cruisers, world record holders, some really inspirational storytellers. And I had an idea a while back to try and get all of these great people into one place, get them on loads of boats, and basically create the best week on the water ever. So I've teamed up with a company called Navigare, who are one of the best charter companies in the world, and we have a flotilla of 10 massive sailboats which are going to be taking off from the bvis on december the 9th going through to the 16th it's going to be the best week ever on the water regattas beach parties storytelling socializing it's going to be a great time here's a little clip of it a little promo if you want to find out more go to theoceancruisers.com backslash odyssey cheers
this at the front where where's she at there we go I'm gonna fill that with some epoxy and some glass balls so I'll make a little dam out of basically backside of some sellotape and we'll fill that get a nice finish and then after that we'll continue to laminate on top of that and the last thing we've got is top of the rudder as well this area here has had quite a few bits of filling done to it in the past and it's that filler that sometimes becomes brittle so I'm gonna laminate that up with some cloth this time and see if we can try and make it last a bit longer Alrighty, I suppose I should probably do something instead of talk about it really So what we're doing just now, the first two holes, or the first D-lands, we're just laying up with small circles to get the thickness up. And then when we go to the um, the rudder repair around the top, where the um, the rudder shaft itself goes through, that's just this bit, just along here. I'll use a different cloth for that. I'll use the roving for that, which is like a, a twill, like a weave, you know? That's because it goes around corners better, and we don't have any vacuum bagging equipment with us at the moment. So we're just gonna do it with a hand layup and use a cloth which goes around corners better. The um, first laminations on this is around the rudder. We've got the um, a bit of chopped strand to fill the holes in, and then I've used the um, the woven mat on top of that to try and get a a nice finish. The beauty of the woven is it goes around corners, so this is wrapped all the way around here, and it's also wrapped all the way around here. Right, so we did the painting this morning. Geordie boy is uh, just putting some protection around that propeller yeah. because he's trying to walk into it. Well, I like someone, right? <laughs> As I did twice. He did knock himself out. <laughs> Actually, this is uh, this is the wedge Geordie boy's enemy right here. This one. That's how he knocks himself out. Three times in two days. Three times in two days. Yeah. He's testing the durability of his skull, like great men do. So, that's the second coat on there. We did that this morning. Three more coats to go. Whoop! Um, so, Chris is going to be working on the rudder. What are you doing Geordie boy? Yeah so we're gonna take a wrap around here. I've reshaped the back of the keel because it was a bit uh, rudder sorry. So that was a bit wonky so I'll fair that off and then lay that up as well. Um, one more patch on the front there maybe and then hopefully two over the top. Two over the top? Yeah a bit of fairing first and then we might see how that goes to just fair it. <laughs> Did you know that? Croissants aren't French, they're Austrian. The Austrians invented croissants, the French put chocolate on them, called them pano chocolat, and now they get all the hype for being the croissant Napoleon people. Well. They stole Napoleon from Corsica, it's unbelievable. Napoleon was from Corsica, so <laughs> this isn't an anti-French video, we're just pointing out facts here, guys. It's something we found out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when we sit down for the ciggy breaks, we get a bit bored. No, actually, we were eating uh, little little croissants when we got bored this time. Right, so, Chris has finished his fabulous work on the rudder, got the sail hub approval, gave it to himself. I wasn't <laughs> too hard for him to ask. <laughs> and um, we're now gonna lift the rudder back into place. Yeah, so we're gonna do some stuff and then we need to go and find some grease from somewhere. Don't know where we'd find grease at this time on a Friday. Silicon grease, that's the thing. Silicon grease. We don't want anything too sticky. Right? Don't want anything too sticky on this rudder, that's what Chris says. Um, right, you do that mate, I'm going to go and try and see Hold if there's one, any downstairs. Got WD-40, that won't work. Right, let's go and see what we've got. There was a few bits on this boat. Could ask the Germans as well actually, see if they've got any. I'm not going to show you the saloon. Have it's, you got uh, a heads repair kit? A heads repair kit? Oh, that's some sort of yeah, I have actually. Found that. Right, revelation, so we were just about to go to the hardware store, we were about to take a 20 minute journey interrupt the day, destroy the workflow, not positive guys, and look what Chris found. Ta -da! What is it? Actual grease itself. Actual grease itself, found in grease. So we've got <laughs> we've got the tools we need, we're gonna do it. And you can watch, I'll put the camera somewhere <clears throat> so you can 
see what we're doing. Right, so there it is. Bit of a whack. Chris, shall I give us an explanation what just happened? Hammer time. Hammer time. It was hammer time. Yeah. So yeah, that's in. So that thing, the white bit, is still cold. So we're going to let that expand a bit. And then that should just shoot straight up. It should just shoot straight up. All right, I'm going to put you back down. Then you can watch the next bit. And that's it, in. Looking nice.